Hey, Ghost Riders, it's Exploring Harley. Hey, first and foremost, guys, thanks so much for the new subscribers. I'm just 1,500 hours of my 4,000 that I need to be monetized. So please keep watching everything, rewatch them, and like get me to those 4,000 watch hours. All right, guys? Today, guys, I'm in Cornwall, Ontario, Canada. I'm at the historic SDG jail. SDG for Stormont Dundas Glengarry Jail. It was constructed in 1833 and was active until 2002, serving as both as a minimum and maximum security facility. Throughout the history, it was the site of many escapes. <laughs> it served as an asylum, a house of refuge, and also was home to a notable courthouse. Designated to hold around 35 inmates, the jail was often overcrowded. The condition of the jail were all the, at the times gruesome, at other times fair. Sometimes the jail would even be home to the family of the inmates. The jail was the site of many deaths. Whatever it be by hanging, illness, the S word, or sometimes even violence. Not to mention the numerous unclaimed bodies buried in the exorcist yard back there. So tonight I will be investigating that incredible place with Elliot from the Phantoms of Yore. Yes, Elliot, gladly and I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Elliot, for giving me the chance, the opportunity to investigate this incredible place. So tonight, guys, we're going to be investigating this place. All right, let's get at it. Hey, you guys. So we're in the jail right now. This is Elliot from the Phantoms of Yore. You guys go and check them out, the description. Everything's gonna be at the end and in this, the description box. Elliot, thank you so much for welcoming me. Thank you, it's, wow. Well, <laughs> well you're very welcome. Can you tell me about a little bit the story, the history yeah. of that place? All right guys, so Jeff has been with me for the last few hours. We've been setting up for my event this weekend, Public Investigation, and I haven't told him anything about the jail, but right now we're gonna do a walkthrough and we are going to discuss the jail, a little bit about the history and the spirits who are known to be here. So right now we are in the courthouse. This is the SDG Historic Jail. The original jail here was built in 1806, and unfortunately it burnt down. It was a wood frame building. It was used as a barracks during the War of 1812. It was rebuilt in 1833. And right now we are in the courthouse. So what I told you that it was built in 1833, it was the, the this building. <laughs> yeah. I was missing the part of the fire. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's history here that goes beyond 1833, which is associated to the property, which is also interesting but this building is 1833. Now in this courtroom, six men were condemned. Actually seven, but only six were set to be executed here. Wow. So in this courtroom, they heard their fate. Wow. To climb the gallows. Now, in terms of paranormal activity up here, people report the children are up here. The reason why I think children may be here is because the jail has small little rooms. Mm -hmm. So when this acted as a house of refuge in the 19th century and you had children here who were being looked after because there was no one to care for them, where could you put them to run around and get exercise in the winter? Okay. Not with the inmates no. in the cell blocks, this big open space. Perfect. <laughs> when the court's not in use, perfect place for children to come here and play. So they say if you put a ball on the ground, the children will push it. Hmm. Now, the two names we did here for children are Billy and Matthew. Oh, so tonight we'll try to... So if you sense a child, try to reach out to Billy or Matthew. Those are the names they seem to react to. Oh, so we'll try. So the other spirit that's here is James O'Reilly, and he was a judge here. 
in the early 20th century. And he died in the chambers in the room directly. Back there? Right. Whoa, yeah, so, okay. So this is when you add in the pan view of the chambers. So he opened court and he suffered from asthma. And he had an asthma attack, oh. which happened. And what he did, he would go to the back to his chambers and he would smoke a cigarette. <laughs> So this is before there were puffers for asthma. So tobacco smoke would open the bronchial tubes. It was what you could do yeah. to quickly open the airways. So he did that and then went into cardiac arrest and he died in the back oh, room. Oh my God, poor man. They say if you sit in his chair, he doesn't like that. He will touch you. Oh. That's what they say. I haven't experienced it, but that's what people say. People have experienced that before. Well, I've sat in the chair of the judge in Assomption, remember? I did the Estes Smith at that back there, so probably we'll try to, we'll see. <laughs> so the last thing that people have experienced here are shadow figures or figures of men. Hmm. So the most notable ones is in this original offender's box. So two of the condemned would have used this box sat here wow. when they heard their fate. So people have seen a man sitting in this box. Wow. Now, you'll hear footsteps up here all the time. If you sit up here quietly. Yeah. Did you hear the footsteps? Just heard the footsteps. The I don't know if you heard that. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> you'll hear footsteps up here all the time. If you sit up here quietly. Yeah. Did you hear the footsteps? Just heard <laughs> Oh, it was clear right over there. Yeah, the right over there. So this is very common here. So one time when I was running my event, um, the last group was in the far side of the jail. No one was here. Um, Eric, Corey, two of my partners were here. Um, Eric and I went ahead downstairs while Corey was in the bathroom. So we went downstairs, started putting equipment away, stuff like that. And um, he comes out of the bathroom and he sees us going down the steps, but it wasn't us. <laughs> We were, so we he, were goes, already... he goes to quickly follow, because we had all the lights shut off, because we were closing up up here. And he heads to the stairs, and he's realizing he didn't hear the jail door downstairs open or close. And oh. he was only 10 feet away from this figure. And when he went down around the corner, you couldn't see anybody. Oh. And no door opened or closed. Came to us, and he's like, did you guys just go downstairs? And we're like, no, as soon as you went in the bathroom, we left. So there was a good five minutes in between when he wow. came down. So that's something people also experience up here. And I'm pretty sure in that, um, in that accused box, you don't have a stove under it like in St. Andrews that somebody <laughs> would no. feed the stove so the accused would be hot and sweaty. No. It's so on wheels judge... so they can move it around. <laughs> but it's old and original. It's uh, the exact same make, I think, as the one at L'Oreal Jail. It's beautiful. It's, it's awesome, guys. I'm going to show you later, but it's incredible. It's all wooden. It's a time it's capsule. Easy. It's like going back in the 19th century. It's a wow. <laughs> so let's move down to the jail. Let's go to the jail. This is the main entrance of the jail, originally the main entrance. Later on, the side door was used as the entrance. The cool feature here is that little door right there under the staircase. What's in that door? <laughs> well, what do you think it was used for? Probably the kids. Hmm? For the refuge for the kids? No? No. So this is attached to the room where we have all the equipment. And that is the officer's bubble, right? That's, oh. the, that's the security room. Okay. Originally, that was the governor's bedroom. That's where the governor slept before they built the governor's house directly beside this building. That was the escape hole. So if there was a riot and stuff oh. was going on in the jail, the governor had a way out. That was the way out of the government. 
Now you could go and pan in the bubble room, but all of our stuff is around and it's all yeah. to see. But, <laughs> You know, but that is the escape hole for the governor oh. and for the guards later on if stuff was happening, right? And it was an easy escape to get out if they were trying to break through their office. That's so cool. <laughs> Thanks. All right, move on through. Yeah, let's go. All right, Jeff, so this is the most often overlooked space. Now, as far as I know, going back in the records, this has always been the interview room, closest to where the officers were. This space offers more activity or equal to any other space within this jail. Um, don't know what happened here, if someone died here, or someone was beaten to death here, we don't know. But constantly seeing shadow figures leaving here, footsteps walking by, the sound of keys jiggling. Um, all sorts of stuff. This is a great place for like an Estes method. When you're here, you often will hear like male voices call out to you from inside the jail. This is one of my favorite spots to be or to investigate, but it's often overlooked because it's just a small room in the hall. Yeah. But this was an interview room, an interrogation room. I think so who knows? Yeah. Almost 200 years of history. What happened here? And I think we're going to do the Estes here. We're going to close off the investigation with an Estes right here. Yeah, I always leave the Estes stuff here for, for guests so that, you know, they can use it. So hopefully this weekend people will. So we're going to finish up with an Estes in there. They call this the trustee's room. Okay, originally this was the turnkey's room. If you don't know what a turnkey is, the turnkey was responsible for running the day-to-day -day um, work life at the jail, managing the schedules, guards, all that stuff. The governor just did administrative stuff. The turnkey ran the jail, so this was his space. But later on, when he didn't live here, this was turned into a dormitory, right? So they'd have bunk beds in here and you would have numerous people living here, usually the lower risk people, oh, okay. kind of like a transition type of room, uh, okay. right? So you wouldn't be in a cell, but you'd have a, your own dorm here with a bunch of guys. Later on, this turned into the intake room. Take off your clothes, spread them. Here's your clothes, take a shower. We need to wash, watch you from the mirror up there. So this had different uses over the years. That was a shower and a toilet. <laughs> oh. Take a look. So when they built the back parking lot, so they took down the wall to make a bigger parking lot, um, they removed three bodies. Oh yeah? yeah? They estimate that there's, someone once told me that they, they wow. think there's like 200 bodies on the ground. Um, I doubt that. I think it's probably more like 60, 70, but um, Peter Balacombe was one of them. Oh, yeah? Okay. And Peter Balacombe is probably the creepiest guy to be executed here. He's a military man. I don't know if you researched him. Not really. No? Was, uh... So in the 1950s, he murdered Anne Carrier. Okay. Um, a father and son found the body naked in a ditch. Right there. Yeah. Now, in every photograph, he has a creepy smile. That little smirk, yeah. Uh, handcuffed. So he stabbed her in the head and in the oh. body. So he was having an affair with her on his wife. Oh. She found out and wanted to break it off. So he murdered her. Wow. Now to speak to a person here in the jail that is condemned, I hate speaking to Peter. Just because of these creepy photographs. Why is he smiling like that? It's like he, he enjoyed it. Yeah. So they were both military personnel. Yeah. That's where they had the affair. Yeah, she's uh, part of uh, the women's corps. Wow. So Peter comes through quite a bit. Um, the name Peter. So try to talk to him if you want to. Yeah, I'm going to try to contact uh, him and see what was his demeanor. 
I don't like talking to him because he's creepy. And like, um, we had a REM pod in here, like going off crazy intelligently when one of my guys was like saying some bad things about him. Mm. So, I mean, don't, I don't recommend you do that. And I kind of gave him some trouble for, <laughs> for, for, for hating on Peter. <laughs> So I'll just give you a little spiel on the visiting area here. Yep. So one of the older accounts from this jail is that the phone will ring and if you pick it up, you'll hear whispering and they'll say your name. Now this has never happened in the four years now. I've been running events here, bookings, investigations, all that stuff. Um, but what was found out is that if you pick up the phone in the courtyard, this phone rings. So I oh. think the account comes from somebody messing with somebody, not that it was anything paranormal. That's, <laughs> probably, that's my feeling. Probably. But they have since cut the line, so it doesn't do that anymore. Oh. These phones are completely dead now. So if they ring, well... Uh, yeah, then as it <laughs> happened, if they ring right now, imagine that. You guys, I wanted to show you this, and I hope you see this because this is a list of the crimes you could get the death penalty for. From 1750 till 1859. So if you have committed one of those crimes, back in the day, committed one of those crimes, back in the day. Did you hear that? Yeah. You hear that voice? I heard a voice. There's nobody here, but that came from down the hall. Yeah, I, from, I heard something from down there. Hello? That even had like echo to it. Hmm? Like it came from at the end of the hall. I wonder if they'll like you. I'm curious. Probably. You think so? I got goosebumps. Somebody's here? Hello, my name is Jeff, I'm a veteran. Do you feel that? Yep. I heard that two former military was in prison here. If you want to talk to me from a brother in arms to one another, I'm open to it. Mr. Seguin or Mr. Balakom. I heard that over there too. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, this is the prime time. Not 3 a.m. now. No. All right, let's get this tour done so you can start investigating. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the original cell block, 1833. In 1833, there was no cell block but this. All this space here was used for admin space, offices. Now, they're cell blocks that happened around the 1860s. Hmm. So, from 1833 to the 1860s, this was the original cell, cell block. block. Oh. And, like you see, the doors are really low because back then they were really small. one of these cells. Look at this. That was your living space. Can you imagine being in there and have to come to the bathroom right here in front of everybody? Taking your shower right here, little corner <laughs> when you can't, they can corner you. <laughs> and this is the isolation. 
and we have a client. So, wow. <laughs> so this year, um, the jail, well last year, the jail received a whole bunch of, our, of documents from the archives. Now back in 2019, I've heard different stories about Henry Seguin. Henry Seguin, um, you know, he, he came from a moderate family here in Cornwall. His family owned the dance hall down on Pitt Street. Um, some of his family is still here now. Huh. Now he's the one who took the cyanide to beat the hangman. So he was accused of killing a man in Maxville with a rifle. He took off and ran away. They thought hmm. he was in the Gatineau Hills. Anyways, he ended up in BC and he ended up changing his name, Alter Ego. Um, he ended up staying with a family. That family later disappeared. They hmm. didn't, then he went to rob a bank and then they caught him. And then his fingerprints matched with Henry Seguin, not his current name. And they shipped him down here to Kingston Penitentiary. And then he came here to be executed, to try to be tried and executed. Okay. So originally they told me he killed himself in the second cell block in the windowless cell block mm -hmm. that he killed himself there in the second cell. Um, then someone else told me it was the second cell in the Hells Angels cell block. Oh. So I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense. If he killed himself in front of a priest from his cell, why would they do it where there's all these other inmates? So when they sent me the documents from the archives and I started reading through it, it was all the investigation um, records for the death of Henry Seguin. And then I was able to find out that this cell is where he took his life because it was in those records. So now we know finally this year, the exact spot that he took the cyanide. Was right here. So our last visit here, we wanted to recreate the death scene. So here we have Father Villeneuve. Okay, he's the man who was appointed by his sister to come here to give the last rites. This is an authentic, last rites kit, not the wow. one that Father Villeneuve had, but this is a good example in their real last rites kit wow. that a priest would bring with him to offer the last rites. We even have the wafer there as well. Wow. So the sweat is still on the collar from the priest who used this kit. And we have lip smack wine stains on the napkins in the kit as well. This is an authentic kit used to help people die. So the death scene, there was a guard who was stationed here as well. So we have our guard and Henry Seguin was found with a towel over his head. He did not want the father to watch him die. So he put a towel over his head and he died on his belly. No, I don't see it like that. <laughs> I'm gonna... So he's face down. He see his feet. That's the position in which he died and he put a towel over his head because he didn't want to be seen dying from the cyanide. Now, last time I was here, that arm was down. I don't know how it got up. <laughs> I don't know if someone went in there and put it up, but that's kind of weird. But that hand was down. Hmm. So I, recre I re recreated this scene just to see if it would stir up anything. I haven't reviewed the footage from that night yet, so I'm not sure from that part if we got anything. Uh, but definitely try to talk to him here tonight. Yeah, we're going to try. But this is 100% where he took his life. It was not solitary back in the 1950s. The punishment cell was solitary. This had bars on it like any other cell. The guard who was stationed here did not have a key for either there in the cell block or there. He was trapped here with Seguin. With Seguin and the father. And there's a guard station outside of the door. Outside, right there. And he gave testimony of what he heard during the whole thing. So oh, we have all those records. Wow. And also, a lot of people in the community think that Father Villeneuve gave him the cyanide. Mm -hmm. like even people come to the event like, yeah, the father snuck it into him. Some people think the family brought it to him. But he had a small aluminum capsule, which you saw earlier. Yeah. So I recreated and remade, and remade this capsule. 
So when people come and visit this summer, they can get an idea of how he brought the cyanide in. And when the medical examiner looked at this, he saw multiple layers of fe fecal matter on it. So he knew that he's been taking this in and out of his rectum for months and months and months. So they think he, f he made it in case of penitentiary, because we know that he made a violin when he was there in mm -hmm. case of pen. So he probably created the aluminum capsule to stash the cyanide. And a guard commented in the record saying, well, it's quite easy to find cyanide in prison. Hmm. Used for like rat poison and stuff of that, chemicals yeah. for cleaning. Yeah. So it wasn't that hard to come by. And when he was at Kingston Penitentiary, he was under investigation for a plot to murder an officer with cyanide. Oh. Right, it was investigated and they never found anything. So he wasn't charged with any type of plot, but someone told the correctional officers that he and others were planning to kill an officer with cyanide. All right, so the cell block that you're in right now is called the Hell's Angels cell block. And it's not because the Hell's Angels died here or anything like that. In the 60s, there was a big bust and they kept them here. That's why the name stuck. Oh. They did, they used the cell block for that. Okay. So it's called the Hell's Angels cell block. Because they housed the Hell's Angels During after that bust. bust. Okay. But none of them died here. There's no Hell's Angel ghosts here. It was just a bust. But this cell block was used for the high risk offenders. This was where the rapists and the murderers, the violent offenders, they were put here. Okay. Right? They wanted to put the non-violent offenders in a cell block and the violent offenders in another one. So this is where they put them. Hmm. Now, I know for sure there's been numerous deaths in this jail all over the place, but I know that the second cell over there, someone did take their life. So the um, one over there, guys, the second cell, right there. The one just before the open one. Now, cell doors here, open and close, experience all the time. It happens when you're upstairs in the courtroom, you'll hear it and you know there's no one down here. Are you, we clearly hear you those footsteps. footsteps. <laughs> um, Peter Balacombe's body after his execution was brought here for the medical examiner to confirm his death. So if you talk to Peter, this may be a place to do it, just his body was brought here. So they laid the body here? Yeah, so not these tables. These okay. weren't here before. Okay. But when he was executed, I guess they had a low population at the time, just they wouldn't do it in front of other offenders. Yeah. Okay, because jails were not always packed. You know, this was notorious. The jail was notorious for in later years to be packed. People sleeping on the floor. You know, but we're talking about the 1990s. Okay. Right? Not 1950s when Peter died. So I assume this was empty as it is in the records. His body was examined here after his execution. Mm. So the person who took their life in the second cell and Peter's body was brought here are the two historical tidbits to tell you about this. Wow. Space. And right. it, it makes me think of the body of, uh, in uh, New Brunswick, the other soldier, uh, after they hung him, they laid the body in the courtroom. Courtrooms were often used yeah. for, you know, for medical purposes and also to store bodies. Yeah. And that's all over, on, all over Canada. Yeah, and that, that hanging was in the, in the, in, in the 40s. Mm -hmm. It was during the war, so. Well, they had to confirm that the person was deceased, yes. so the medical examiner had to go over the body and say, yes, he's dead. So we have confirmed death here, so. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect reference board, just to quickly go through them, because we can't fill up your video posting with the whole life yeah. story of every person here. So if you have to dig or if you have any questions, if you have a capture and you think it might be associated with someone, let me know. I'll tell you if it connects. Clark Brown, the first one. Okay. So pretty simple. He was pissed off at his father because his father mortgaged the farm property. He saw that as his inheritance. Mm -hmm. Some people think his mother was involved in the murder. He took an ax and he bloodily killed his sister and father in their farmhouse. Wow. Um, interesting note for him is that a part of his defense was he was newly married and too much sex drove him to insanity. 
That was one of his defenses. <laughs> okay, interesting tidbit. Usually it's the opposite, but... <laughs> so, Clark, I've never had any luck getting any evidence that Clark is still here. He is the oldest execution to occur here. 1879. Yeah, so a lot of people felt his mom did it, and he was taking the rap for him, but he swore before God that he and he alone did it. Tried to exonerate his mother. Was his mother aware of this plan? Who knows? Who knows? People are suspicious that she was. The next one to be executed, James Slavin. He was a gunslinger. Okay. He was a troublemaker. He liked, he was rowdy. He liked to fight people. He went out west. Out west, he ran away from some charges here in Cornwall. He ended up coming back. Um, he went to the town fair, and he was looking for a fight, and he found it. He got into a fight, hmm. um, and he ended up, uh, you know, murdering one of the guys. And then all the townspeople started chasing him. And then he bumped into a constable, uh, Constable Davy. And uh, they opened fire, and he killed him, and that was the only police death here in Cornwall to this day. Yeah. And you saw his picture. Yeah, I've officers. seen it, and I'm going to So he it. was the only, and guess what? It was his first day on the job. Oh. Yeah, i seen it. Uh, yeah, you, you see it on the, he was 46 years old, and it was his first, first day on the job. On the job. Yeah. Wow. So he. Yeah, I heard that. You heard that? Yep. That's a chair. That's a chair. Could be the cleaning people. Ah. Uh. It's like cleaning people. <laughs> cleaning people. <laughs> All right, Jeff. This is the windowless cell block. Now, for most people, they think it's the creepiest because it's the darkest. Because there's no windows. There's no light that comes in here. Now, it originally did have windows, right? But when they put in the extension, they had to seal up the windows. Yep. Now, someone did take their life in this cell as well. And it is again, the second cell. Pretty coincidental that yeah, two, the two, second cell. two of the suicides are connected to the second cell, right? But a lot of people feel stuff in the second last cell. Oh. So maybe in the documents they had it wrong, right? Hmm. But we've had some great EVPs in that cell block. But the ones at the end and this one is where people feel the most activity. Cool. All right, Jeff. So this is just a recreation of the scaffold. Um, most gallows would have 13 steps leading up. So this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So pretty close. Okay, so right now we're in the officer's courtyard. Most of the non-public executions took place in the officer's courtyard. And the officer's courtyard was this wide and it ran long. Okay. Mm, okay. Now this building here is general population. Remember we went upstairs? Yeah. The newer cell block, like what jails look like mm -hmm. today. So the executions took place in this yard, the wow. non-public ones. Okay, and they stopped public executions, I think, in like the 1870s, 1880s, yeah, somewhere around there. So when you're up there, a lot of the activity in general population, like why, why would it be haunted? It's only like, you know, 30 years old. Well, the floor of general population is exactly 13 steps up. <laughs> and it's built over the original gallow area. So, so th at least three, 
maybe four of the men stood in that right back there. area, in that back cell block where you saw me put the REM pod. That's why people feel stuff there, because that is where they stood to meet their death oh. originally. It wouldn't be this close here, but it would be in the back. Right there. So the public it. executions were in the bigger courtyard so people could come in, but I think only two of them were public. in this tour just so we can get you all the information so we can get to the investigation. This is the female cell block. This is modern, this is not historic. This whole area that we're in right now was built in the 1980s, okay? This was the female cell block. But when they didn't have women, they would put people here who needed, um, I guess couldn't be in the common areas. I don't wanna say it, but I'll just say it, sex offenders. Okay. So people who are here for sexual offenses and you know, if you were in jail for that, most of the time, if the population knew, you should not be housed with them, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's an interesting story from the 1980s of a female officer um, who got really creeped out because one of them who was in here, every time she came to use the washroom right there, would be listening to her. Hmm. Use the washroom, that made her very uncomfortable. Okay. So that's one little story from here. Um, so I'll tell you the rest of that. I'll tell you why this is active. And this before. is? So this is the nurse's office. The nurse's so office. So the examination room. A lot of activity back here. One guy was laying down on this bed and he did the Estes method. And one of the guys on the team was crawling in here to spook him on the ground. Went to, to grab him, just to scare him. And right before he was about to grab him, the guy doing the Estes method jumped out of the bed saying, holy shit, something grabbed me. So the ghost beat his friend to the ground. To grab him. Yeah. Wow. The thing about the spirits here, what we notice is that they love to mess with you. Okay. They want you to think that they're triggering things. And then when you go to try to figure it out, like it's just, you, you'll see if it happens to you, you'll, okay. you'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> This corner in particular is a lot of activity. That's why I have the motion activated music box. So if you're down here later, feel free to turn it on. I have it pointed to that corner because specifically it gets triggered here for some reason. And it's always when you leave the room. All right, this is just an example of the rack. So a prisoner would be strapped up here and they would get the strap on the buttocks, right? Mm -hmm. Just an example. So the reason why this is so active is that where you're standing right now, you're six feet underground. And what did I tell you before about what's in the ground here? A couple of bodies. Several bodies were removed from this area when they built this. One of them was Henry Seguin. Oh. They don't know the others because if no one came to claim your body in a jail, you were buried in an unmarked grave. Yeah. Now what they also found were long forgotten segregation chambers. Oh. So these were thick stone holes in the ground where they would put prisoners as a form of punishment. They would drop them in. Like uh, back in the, uh, in the medieval days, the Ubiliets. Yeah, or in, in the south, hot boxes. Yeah. All right, so I mean, this, this is what they found when they excavated it to build all this. So right now, you are in the burial of multiple people walking through these halls. Wow. Right? We've captured the audio of straight up gravel, footsteps in gravel. There's no gravel here. No, nope, it's very loud gravel. It's concrete. You'll guys. hear pebbles, um, voices. But the most famous story here is that since they've been running tours, since they opened it as a museum, multiple children, years apart, have reported the same entity a woman in black who's crying. Hmm. Children are seeing this, not adults. Children on tour are seeing this. Okay, and they see her down this hall here, which goes to the spiral staircase that leads you to court. To the courthouse, yes. So I'm wondering, that woman who was murdered, is that her body was her grave disturbed? 
Mm. We haven't turned the lights off here yet because we're still setting up a live feed, which you've probably already seen on Exploring with Harley. This is the jail kitchen. Now this is modern. This was built during the extension period, so 1980s. Simple prison kitchen or jail kitchen. I shouldn't say prison. So, but as soon as we go down the stairs, we enter the basement. And this is the feature of this weekend, because after this weekend, it will not be available for anybody to investigate again. So guys, we have exclusivity tonight. So the basement was part of the floor plan. It was used to store prisoners. So this right here, is an interview room, interrogation room. Now this used to be larger, connected to the laundry room, which we didn't show you, but you know, Jeff might go down there later. <laughs> um, so this was used as like a, maybe an interview interrogation room. If you come inside, you know, you'll see there is a panic button in here, over here, you know, so it could have been a prep area for kitchen workers or prisoners. Um, well, let's call it the interrogation room. Really haven't seen any records that describe this space as anything, but um, investigate, find out. Maybe they'll tell you. And it, it, do, it doesn't flicker anymore, but on my screen it flickers. No, it's flickering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's flickering. Not as much. Though. Not as much as it was before, but... It's more faint. But look at my screen. Yeah, a hell of a lot, yeah. <laughs> You're right, like it, it's like you know from the reflection is flickering, but yeah. just looking at the light, you wouldn't know. No. But it didn't do that in the beginning. No. I've never seen it do that before. All right. So, this is the original hole, this is the punishment cell. This is where prisoners were punished. This is segregation, the hole, whatever you want to call it. So here I can tell you the story about Jim Sutherland. Now I'll just turn the light off. It's heating up that camera. So Jim Sutherland um, was an inmate here who was brutally punished by the guards, unfairly, mm -hmm. Jim Sutherland. And he died here in the hole. There's been other two other deaths that happened in here as well. Great EVP we got, clear as day, I'm in the hole with the hmm. echo and everything. You hear how there's that echo in yep. here? Well, that EVP, if I had time, well, I could probably send you the clip later if you wanted to use it. I'm in the hole. Wow. Perfect. Right? And he died in the hole. Maybe he's still in the hole. Hmm. We don't know. But this has not really been investigated for 20 years. Wow. A long time. So Today. this is the feature of this weekend. Spend time in here. I'll be on the live. So who knows what the capture, you can download that live app after and see what, what was captured, you never know. Exactly. Um, but when you're in here, try to talk softly because your audio is going to peak. Because these are designed yeah. for if you yell, it's going to drive you crazy mm -hmm. to deter people from yelling in here. So the more you yell, the more it affects your ears. Your drums. Right? So the audio right now is probably super loud oh, yeah, because yeah, it's all echoing. I see it peaking. <laughs> yeah. We have to keep our voices there. <laughs> yeah, like, like literally I try to whisper when I'm in here investigating. <laughs> cool. So this is the hole. This is the hole, guys. So upstairs, if you recall, the window of the cell block. Mm -hmm. There were, before they concreted the floors, trap doors. Hmm. The trap doors led to three cell blocks on the other side of this wall. So the insane, the lunatics, were kept in these cells, three of them. They're now completely sealed because the only access to these cells were from above, which is now concreted over. Oh my God. They are on the other side of this wall. Oh. <laughs> okay. So it's, well, this weekend, uh, my boys are bringing one of those uh, thin cameras. Yes. So we're going to try to follow the piping to see if we can get a look inside. Because we're really curious what's inside those cells as they've been sealed for, God, maybe 40 years now. Whoa. Long time. There's no way into them. 
but they're here on the other side of the wall, the asylum cells. So these were people who would be transferred to Rockwood Asylum. They would be staying in those cells. And who knows who took their life in those cells? Hmm. Who knows what happened in those cells? And I'm curious what they looked like. Yes. Because it's interesting being dropped into them. What about the poor people above? <laughs> were they pissing down on these people out of spite? Were they mm. yelling at them? Like, that's a weird setup. Or probably some stuff etched in the walls. Yeah, we look for graffiti and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just interesting to think that they were on top of each other. So upstairs in the window of the cell block, they were directly in line below. Below. Wow. So very interesting. Yep. Would love to be able to get in there, but unfortunately we can't. But they're on so the other side of this wall. Right there. So right behind there, guys would be so this section here those cells right there now i can't let you go beyond the no. the doorway there but if you did you would find no way into this block of space because there's just no way in i see wow so i'm hoping because they had to run stuff see through here oh yeah so piping i'm hoping that there's a way somewhere to get those little cameras back there the little little camera with a light on yeah you know, a little snake camera Okay, guys, now we're in the cell where Harry Sagan took his life. So, this is it. Hello, Mr. Sagan. My name is Jeff. Thank you. Can you do that again, please? Can you go for that device again, please, Mr. Seguet? Henri? May I call you Henri? Thank you. So, brother in arms to another. Sorry, I'm just flipping my screen around so I can see what the heck I'm doing. I'm sorry guys if I get you. Thank you. So Mr. Seguin. Mr. Henri Seguin. Why did you took your life? Were you afraid of the news? I don't know if you noticed, but I put a flashlight at the bottom of your bed. Can you touch it to open it, please? Yeah, I know that. And there's a ball, there's a little ball on the mannequin that is used to represent you. Can you go and touch it, please? No? I would really appreciate it. You know that the flashlight right there? Can you go and touch it? Just a slight touch, it's gonna light up. No, it's okay. Can you go for the red light again? Just to show me that you're here again, still with me? Script. Yes, I had a couple of words coming through. 
script your Sarah Elijah anniversary and yes I will a script for what it was a script it was a script that you would take cyanide to end your life was that it everything was planned script probably he meant the letter the 32 page letter he wrote to his sister here are here are some of these lines justice has condemned me as a dog they will try and hang me like one but i will try my best not to i will cheat them to the very last end if i do succeed to cheat them in the end i will only be too glad to do so. If I don't cheat them, I will be, it will not be because I did not try to do so. Please forgive me, my dear sister, if I do succeed. I am not a dog and do not want to die like one for something I am not guilty of. Man. Yes, I'm a man. My name is Jeff. And like I said, just like you, I'm a veteran. I even served in a war zone. Not as a combatant, but as a UN peacekeeper. You do not understand? What part do you not understand? I know that you had UN peacekeepers in the 50s. You know the troops that went to Korea? Can you try and place back the arm of the mannequin that represent you? Do you want me to put it back like it was? Great. Great? What is great? For me to put back your arm? Can you touch the red light if you want me to put down the arm of the mannequin? No? It's okay. Feel free. If you don't wish to communicate, I will understand. Just trying to establish a line of communication with between us. That's all. Just want to know your story. You know, it's kind of unusual for a prisoner to take cyanide to take his life. And I just want to understand why you did it. Was it to cheat the news? Were you afraid of choking? You know, when you commit a crime, usually His? His what? Please. Can you go for that little light right here? This one? Can you try and turn it off? Yeah. 
Yeah, if, you, if you want, I'm gonna step out of your, your cell. There you go. Can you try and turn off the light? Please? Do you want me to count you down? Three, two, one. Come on. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Can you turn it back on, please? Just put your energy into it. I just want to establish a communication between us. That's all. That's my way of knowing that you want to communicate with me. I'm pretty sure we could have get along back in the army days. Hospital. They probably took you to the hospital, yes. But you took cyanide. That's unfortunate. Can you go for the flashlight, please? That would be much appreciated. More. Yes? Please, Henry. May I call you Henry? Or do you wish me to call you Mr. Seguin? You can answer by going to that red light over there. Leave this place, no. I want to communicate with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. It doesn't hurt. It's just a light. Just a flashlight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you go for the ball on the mannequin? Just do the same thing. Just put your energy into it. Healed. Healed? E-A-L-D? What? You guys, if you know what it means, E A L D, yield. Okay. I heard that you requested Father Villeneuve to be there. Did you know me, Father Villeneuve? Was he a personal friend of the family? when you knew him personally. You knew him personally. Wow. Just to confirm that you knew Father Villeneuve personally, can you turn off the flashlight? It's Grandma. It's Grandma. So, Father Villeneuve, you knew your grandmother, is that right? Can you turn off the flashlight if, if, if it's right? Thank you. So, Father Villeneuve was a friend of your grandmother. So, that's why your family requested as Father Villeneuve. Were you ashamed to do what you did? That's why you put a, a blanket on your head? Can you touch one of my devices? And tell me if you were ashamed? Were you scared?
You know, Henry, I'm not here to judge you. You did what you did, and it's un unfortunate. You met your creator by another way. I hope you're at peace. Are you at peace, Henry? Throw what? Are you going to throw something? If you want to throw something, yeah, go ahead. I wish to see that. Can you push down the ball from the mannequin? Are you the one knocking on the bedding? Can you knock, please? Thank you. Probably the building, but... Are you still here, Henry? Can you go for that red light? Thank you. Really appreciate. No, not here. No, not here? Where? Where do you want to go? Do you want me to move elsewhere? Can you turn off the flashlight if you want me to move on? Kiss. <laughs> I hope that's a random word. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. So do you want me to move on? Or do you wish to communicate with me again? Do you still wish to communicate with me, Henry? If you want me to go, can you go and touch that red light? Or if you want me to, to stay, can you turn on the flashlight? I know I have, I'm asking, but it's just to be sure to know what you want. If you want me to stay, please turn on the flashlight. If you want me to go elsewhere and speak with uh, somebody else, go for the red light near the mannequin. What would it be? You want me to stay or you want me to go? The ball is in your camp. We are watching you all. Well, I hope so. I hope so. So, Henry, what would it be? You want me to stay or you want me to go? If you want me to stay, Turn on the flashlight. If you want me to go elsewhere and speak to someone else, please turn, touch the red light or the antenna. That thing near the mannequin. Not sure? Okay. I have another light right here. gonna set it well right here <laughs> right between the legs of the mannequin so you can go and touch that light too it's called a k2 
Can you go near the green light? Try to spike, spike it up a bit. Nice. Please, Henry, do some noise. There's a cell door right there that is slightly open. Can you close it all the way down? Turn off the flashlight. Thank you. I really appreciate. So if I understand, you open up the flashlight, you want me to stay here with you and communicate with you. Is that right? Can you go near that green light if it's right? Try and make it spike. If you go in front of it, it's gonna go up. No? It's okay, Henry. I know that problem. Innocent. So you think you were innocent. Is that it? Or is it somebody else that speaks to me? That said that he was innocent. Just want to understand. Were you really guilty, Henry? Did you really kill that, that person? Doesn't matter anymore. Touch any of the devices in there. No. Well, it's okay. Thank you for the flashlight. So, if I understand correctly, you were guilty, right? If you were, can you turn off the flashlight? That you really killed that person? Thank you, Henry. Regina, do you mean the queen? You know that the queen passed away. Sleeping. Yes, you're sleeping for a very long time now. So Henry, I'm gonna carry on. You gave me some good communication, but I think I'm gonna go on and try to communicate with some of uh, others of your friends. So thank you very much for everything that you gave me. Wasn't much, but it was good. Word. What? And there's another word that came out. Look at that. Healed. E A L D. And sometimes the words that come out. That's so weird. Thank you for the flashlight. And sometimes it's really old words because when I researched them. It's in English, right? Who did this, right? Yep. So probably, uh, uh, like probably created it with the historic places in the UK in mind and old English. Yes, because we had uh, the word jail coming in, G-A-O-L, the old spelling, yeah. Pronounced jail, but if you read yeah. it in English, you're like, go? Gold, yeah. 
Is it gold? <laughs> so Henry, can you go again for that red light over there? That round thing with the metal stick? You seem to be liking it before. He was playing with the ram pot before, but now nothing. Play with the ram pod, turn on and off the flashlight. K2 didn't win up, flip cat ball, nothing. Well, it's like fishing. Try to punish himself. People are freaking out about the bangs down there. Yeah. And I'm hearing the bangs too, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Maybe the audio gain is too high and it's picking up, uh, like from the uh, hot water tank or something. The cracking, yeah. Boom. So I think we're going to carry on. Thank you so much. And I think I'm going to see you around. Bye, Henry. Okay, guys, now we're in the punishment cell and our REM pod is already hitting, guys. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the static cam right there and we got to go in the cell right there. So you were going for that red light. Can you go again, please? Jim Sutherland, I'm in the hole, the mm -hmm. man who was beaten to death by the guards. There's also two people here who took their life inside the sun. And then there's the asylum cells that are locked up in time beside you. The earliest account I know from here is was during a tour when it used to be open and a woman ended up running screaming out of this jail. Oh yeah. Because of something she experienced here. Okay. And also, I told you recently about the EVP of the child in here. Yeah. Can you help me? So, I'll leave it to you. Because I think the experience is bringing my energy in here is different because they know me here. Yeah. And sometimes they stay away from me. And you'll notice when I leave, that maybe you and start stuff starts happening for you. Cool. So, I'll go back into the governor's residence. I'll okay. watch you from the live feed. Okay. Um, if you need me, just scream help. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> I think I'll be fine. I've seen worse. <laughs> but listen up to that thing and try to figure out what it is because it is damn loud on the audio. No, I'm going to listen. I'm going to... I mean, you got the hot water tank. It's possibly that. But I mean, I think since we've been down here, it was so frequent that we would have heard it already. Yeah. And there's a metallic dragging sound, which... Were you making those sounds? Hmm? Good luck, Jeff. Thanks. I'm going to move the static cam so you guys can see me in there. So I'm going to move it right here. Well, oh, even though. There we go. I'm going to get you guys in here. So, oh, this one's not even filming. So, I'm going to bring this one here. Joe? Hello, Joe? Were you an inmate? Or were you in the asylum? You know that my nickname is Joe. My father used to call me Joe. Carriage. Carriage. Are you talking about your carriage? Am I too close? If I'm too close, I can move. I'm gonna move a little bit back here. My name is Jeff. I'm a veteran and I'm here to try to communicate with you. 
Everything here is armless. I'm pretty sure that you know everything, all the devices that are here. So feel free. You can touch them, they are harmless. They're just tools to help me communicate with you. That's all. All right? Stacy. Stacy. Was Stacy somebody that you knew? Probably your sweetheart? I know that somebody was playing with the round thing with a metal stick. It's called a ram pod. Can you go again and touch it, please? Just go near it. It's going to show me that you're here with me. I'm a friend. I'm not a guard. I'm not a bad person. I'm pretty sure that even though I'm a good person. <laughs> and yes, I'm French. I'm from Quebec. From Trois Rivières. You know Trois Rivières? Have you ever been, ever been to Quebec? Did you wish to communicate? If I'm too close, I can't, I can't walk back. Look, okay? Do you, want, do you want me to step, to step out? Can you touch one of, my, one of my devices if you want me to step out? Please feel free. Everything here is harmless. My name is... Strangled. Did you get strangled? Or you strangled someone? Just want to understand. Please come look. You can go near that. There's a light right here. If you go over it, it's gonna go up. There's many lights. If you move, you know, if you go near that, there's that light right here. If you put your energy into it, it's gonna light up just like that. Just like that. There you go. And there's a cat ball right there. If you touch it, it will glow. Can you go and try and touch one of my devices, please? I understand if you're shy. Agatha, another name. Wow, okay. I'm more, I'm more puzzled than anything now. You're getting me some names, but... I'm a man. You're a man. Am I talking to Jim? Am I talking to the inmate who was brutally beaten by the guards who sadly passed away here? Is that you? Can you touch one of my devices, please? Oops. Everything's harmless, okay? I'm a friend, I'm really... I'm a nice person, all right? Thank you for listening. Well, thank you. But I would really appreciate if you would go near one of my devices, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, wow. You see? 
It's not that hard. Doesn't hurt. Makes pretty lights. And it sounds. And there's that light right there. If you put all your energy into it, it's gonna light up. Try it. I feel that you're here. It's cold right here. I feel it. Can, do you want to touch my hand? Please. Okay, I won't look. Please. No, it's okay. It's okay, I know you don't know me. My real name is Jean-Francois. Everybody calls me Jeff. Don't be afraid. Are you afraid? Me? No. Are you afraid? I think you're afraid of me. I think you're afraid of the people that come here. You don't know what's happening. Is that it? Is that it? You don't know what's happening? And that's why you scare people? You can't talk to me. You know? One thing I can do though is lower the red light. Okay? I'm going to lower the red light a bit. And there you go. And I'm going to open. This up. There you go. So. It's a little bit darker. You probably ended in the hospital after those guards did what they did to you. And that was bad. Yes, that was really bad. I feel your sorrow. I feel your pain. You were hurting really bad, are you? You asked them to stop and they were keep hitting you. Is that it? You were begging them to stop. I'm sorry. I'm really really sorry that will happen to you. Can you put all your energy into that Associated. light? Associated. Associated with what? I don't understand. Could be a random word. Can you put your energy into that light, please? Concentrate everything into it. I would really appreciate if you would light it up. Or 
okay, I'm going to do a deal with you, okay? I'm going to light it up and you're going to turn it off, okay? Okay, wait. Okay, there you go. Now can you turn it off? Just twist it. Would you help? <laughs> I already helped you. <laughs> okay. Just like that, okay? Just like that. Okay, don't open it. There you go, okay? Now can you try to open it? Just put your energy, put all the energy into it and just concentrate your energy right into that light. Call out. Call out? Is it Henry Seguin or is it Peter Balakon or is it a guard asking for the prisoner to call out? No? You keep making the temperature drop. I know that this place wasn't investigated yeah. for a long time and I'm pretty sure that some of you wants to communicate have a message, a final message to get through. You fell? Or the guard said that you fell, that's why you were all beat up. Is that what they said? That you fell? <laughs> I hope not. That would be <laughs> the worst thing to say. You're not really... I understand if you don't want to talk. I really, really, really understand. You don't know me and it's the first time You've been isolated down here for so long. And if you come for from the mental more. more, where's your last name? More? <laughs> oh my god. It's called a cell phone. Nowadays we have telephones that we can carry around to call and I use it as a device to help me communicate with you. It's like a machine that will give images and sound. Uh, like a picture, a talking picture. But nowadays, it's all in there. But you can use it like you did to communicate. Happy. You're happy, oh wow. Thank you. Can you show me that you're really happy and touch one of my devices, please?
Can you go for the red light over there? You seem to be liking it. It's called a ram pod. That red light with the metal stick. The round thing. Can you touch it if you're happy that somebody is talking to you? No? Oh, okay. I thought that you were happy. That finally somebody was speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna listen. If you hear strange sounds, guys, it's my stomach. Myself. Can you tell me your name, please? Devices here are harmless. Everything is just lights and sounds. Good morrow. Good morrow. <laughs> Good morrow, sir. Old English. Pressure change. Thank you. Can you knock or try to talk? I know there's something that is making sound. It would be really hard for me to hear you. Which one? Can you do it again, please? Okay, I'm gonna listen. Universe. <laughs> Random word. Can you do a sound again? If you don't want to communicate, I'm going to carry on. Do you want me to stay or to carry on? If you want me to stay, 
Touch that red light. If you want me to go, turn on the flashlight. Can you do that? Once again, if you want me to stay, go for that red light over there. If you want me to go elsewhere and speak with someone else, Edith again. No, it was Eli that I had earlier on. Now, Edith. Like I was saying, if you want me to go elsewhere and communicate with other spirits around, go for that flashlight. If you want me to stay with you and communicate with you, go for that red light over there. Or either. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Okay, then I will stay. I will stay a little bit longer because you said so. You asked so and I will stay. I'm sorry I'm yawning. I'm a little bit tired. But yes, I will stay. Can you tell me your name again? Muchly appreciate. Wow. Can you go closer to it, please? Can you try to grab the antenna? The metal stick? Can you try and grab it? No? that stick right here. No. Usually you guys love the flashlight. Usually you love the flashlight. Kind of intriguing, no? Can you try and turn it off? Hands tied. Turn it off. Thank you. Did you have your hands tied when you they beat you up? Can you use one of my devices to tell me if I'm right? Just hope those steps was. <laughs> I just hope that was Elliot. <laughs> yeah, he's coming. Everything's good. I'm having a great conversation. And I, I asked if they want me to stay or to go. I say, if you want me to stay, touch the ramp pod or turn off the flashlight if you want me to go. They said, stay on the spirit talker. Mm -hmm. I heard it as well. <laughs> that was fucking insane. I'm in my 50s. 
You know, the, the woman in black just described as having gray hair. I'm in my 50s. Are you the woman in black? Can you touch one of my devices if you're the woman in black? Thank you. And you were getting E names as well, right? He did, yeah. So Eliza and Elizabeth comes up a lot around here. I had Elijah up uh, where uh, uh, with Enrique again, and down here I had Edith. I had many names here. Edith I had Happy. <laughs> Thank you for the key too. Okay. Uh, I had the family name Moore. M O M O O R at Edith Stay Hands Tied. I'm in my fifties. Thank you for a key too.